Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Rahul Verma. I work at the Center for Policy Research. Uh, and we're meeting after a long time, uh, uh, post-June uh, election results. Uh, this uh, panel discussion is happening on elections and politics, uh, which, have been, which we have been doing uh, during the run-up to 2024 elections a lot. Uh, what I'm going to do today is give you a brief snapshot of uh, the results uh, that came out yesterday in both these states. Uh, and then I'll invite my panelists to comment on the results and uh, share their own uh, perspectives. And finally, uh, we'll have members from the audience to ask questions uh, from the panelists. So let me give you an overview of uh, what happened. Uh, first, it was an unexpected and surprising result, uh, at least for me. I don't know about my panelists. Uh, and especially after the exit polls came out, uh, though now given uh, their track record, uh, uh, especially during the 2024 Lok Sabha elections, and now uh, we'll have to take what exit polls say with a pinch of salt. Uh, so the predictions for Haryana was that Congress is likely to get a clear majority. Uh, BJP uh, will struggle. Uh, uh, in reality, BJP got a third term. It's a historic because before this, no party in Haryana had three consecutive terms, and especially BJP managed to improve, like the vote share and seat share that they received yesterday is highest ever for them in the state. Similarly, for Jammu and Kashmir, the expectations were of a fragmented verdict, while most exit polls had indicated that NC National Conference and Congress Alliance is going to have an edge. Most had shied away from saying uh, that they will get a clear majority. The coalition, in fact, got a clear majority. And if you look at the number of seats that uh, NC won alone, they were very, very close to a uh, uh, majority mark. What also uh, uh, the results yesterday inform us that there was a bipolarity evident in Lok Sabha elections at the state level. What do I mean by that bipolarity? That most of the seats were actually won by political parties which were part of National Democratic Alliance or that were part of India Alliance. Parties that were not part of these two alliances actually suffered heavily. You can think from right from AIDMK in Tamil Nadu, YSRCP in Andhra, TRS in Telangana, uh, Biju Janta in, in Odisha, uh, BSP in Uttar Pradesh, uh, uh, INLD and JJP in Haryana, and even PDP and, and uh, uh, in, 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 in in that sense in, in uh, Jammu and Kashmir. So uh, even yesterday, what we found that in both states, uh, the two main parties picked up the most of the seats. Uh, independents and smaller parties got very fewer votes and seats in that uh, comparison. So the kind of fragmented verdict that was expected, uh, at least in case of Jammu and Kashmir, that didn't held out because these smaller parties and independents uh, got squeezed. And this bipolarity also has another sort of like logic and how it displayed in both these states. Uh, we find some evidence, and I have like taken some of those evidence from what got published in, in newspapers today. Uh, polarization in Haryana is on caste axis, which is JAT versus non-JAT binary. And in Jammu Kashmir, it uh, played on the religion axis, Hindu versus Muslim. Uh, while we have had the results yesterday, I think that this polarization will get sharper in uh, months and years to come, and this will have governance consequences for uh, both the state and, and, and parties that have come to power will have to face this reality and will have to adapt to this reality. I think a lot of conversation yesterday about the results, especially in case of Haryana, was that perhaps independence played a crucial role in determining the outcome. To me, in smaller states, states where you have lower number of seats, such as Haryana or Jammu and Kashmir with 90 seats, and where average number of electors per AC is on the lower side, independents and smaller parties always have some role to play. And sometimes if they win enough number of seats, they can uh, you know, uh, uh, change uh, the direction of the outcome. So. I don't think the 2024 results yesterday uh, were of any different. And finally, uh, whether this will have any effect on Maharashtra, Jharkhand, and Delhi, I think uh, 
uh, everybody, uh, you know, after 2024 Lok Sabha elections, not everybody, but most people thought now that BJP is on decline and Congress is on upswing, uh, have started recalibrating uh, those kind of statements. To me, each round of elections is different. Uh, there's no settlement of politics in that sense. You know, uh, uh, perhaps BJP became uh, overconfident after the December 2023 results in the Hindi heartland, uh, uh, and they uh, get a shock uh, in the Lok Sabha results, especially in the Hindi heartland itself in Rajasthan, in, in, in Haryana, and in UP. And uh, same way, perhaps Congress uh, 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 understood that now they are on upswing, uh, they have leveled BJP in Haryana. It's a matter of time that they will win the state. Uh, so I don't think Maharashtra, Jharkhand, and Delhi, uh, in that sense, they will definitely energize the BJP cadre uh, uh, after winning Haryana. Uh, but those elections are going to be uh, separate, held on different kind of uh, dynamics. And I'm happy to sort of like talk about some of those things later on during Q&A. But let me just give a snapshot of what happened in Jammu and Kashmir first. Uh, National Conference and Congress Alliance won 49 seats, BJP got 29 seats, PDP got three independents and other parties got 9% seat, nine seats. And so elections in Jammu and Kashmir happened after 10 years. Last time it was in 2014. After that, the state underwent a reorganization and then a delimitation exercise, which completely changed the electoral map. So it would be hard to compare from 2020, uh, uh, 2014 uh, especially at the seat level. In the last assembly, uh, uh, Jammu and Kashmir had 87 uh, MLAs. Uh, so the distribution was 37 from Jammu, 46 from Kashmir, and four from Ladakh. Now Ladakh is out of picture. You have 90 seats. Uh, Jammu has 43, so six seats increased there, and Kashmir has 47, one seat increased there. While BJP would may say that, you know, last time they had 25, 26 seats, they have gained three seats. In fact, given that the number of seats had increased in Jammu, they were expecting to cross 32, 33 seats. And had that happened, we would have seen a very different kind of uh, result in Jammu and Kashmir. And I think BJP was also hoping for a more fragmented result from Kashmir region, especially smaller parties or candidates that were aligned with Engineer Rashid or Sajjad Loan or Gulam Nabi Azad and PDP getting some more seats, uh, uh, unlike what happened where NC actually dominated uh, the Senate alone, 142 seats. So it's remarkable given that Omar Abdullah six months back had lost his uh, Lok Sabha seat. And so just you know, uh, Hindu had these two uh, uh, sort of like interesting set of maps. Uh, if you look at, uh, you know, Jammu and Kashmir seems to be divided in terms of who got elected from where. Uh, the saffron color represents uh, BJP and the blue color represents India Alliance, which is Congress uh, and National Conference and CPIM. Uh, so National Conference completely dominated the Kashmir uh, 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 part of the uh, state, whereas BJP dominated the Jammu region. In fact, even within the Jammu region, these sort of like, if you look at my cursor, these seats are actually part of Jammu, uh, but they also have a uh, uh, Muslim majority or uh, Muslims are in higher uh, proportion. Uh, these are districts uh, of, of Poonch, Rajori, Ramban, and Kishwar. Uh, I think in these region, uh, you know, NC and uh, Congress uh, part, uh, party did well. And this was also reflected in region-wise vote share, where the India Alliance had 42% vote share in the uh, valley. Uh, BJP uh, nearly had, uh, you know, negligible presence there. They largely relied on uh, winning seats from Jammu Kashmir, where they had Jammu uh, region, where they had 45% vote share. And uh, this map, uh, sort of like an interesting graph from uh, Hindustan Times, what they have done here, they have plotted uh, on Y axis, you have BJP vote share. On X axis, you have uh, population of Hindus at the district level. And you would see that there is a positive correlation between uh, the Hindu population and BJP vote share, the districts of Udhampur, Jammu, and Katwa, uh, 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 you know, BJP vote share was uh, up more than 50 percentage point, and the Hindu population in these districts is also more than 80 percentage point, uh, uh, 80%. But there are uh, basically districts which I was mentioning, 
uh, uh, Punch and, and Ramban and other places where the Hindu population is on the lower end and BGP also got uh, lower number of votes from these regions. Now, moving on to Haryana, what happened in Haryana is that, as I told you, BJP had a historic sort of like verdict in terms of both vote share and seat share, though the difference in vote share between the Congress Alliance and BJP is barely uh, one percentage point, BJP was able to uh, gain a lot many seats. And that has a very interesting dynamics What why it happened. To me, Haryana results yesterday was shouldn't be just understood from uh, the immediate election result, but also long-term social realignment that has happened in Haryana politics. Congress, before Huda became CM in Haryana, used to have a much broader uh, uh, umbrella social coalition, uh, especially under uh, uh, Bhajan Lal and other things. Once uh, Huda became CM in 2005, Congress in that sense sort of like gravitating towards JAT voters, due Pre-2005, Indian National Lok Dal, which has been led by Devilal, uh, his son Om Prakash Chautala, and uh, within his family, was the party of Jat votes in, in that sense. What has happened in last 15 to 20 years, INLD and its breakaway faction has declined, uh, uh, and be Congress became more Jat-centric, which created a space for the BJP to enter the state using this JAT versus non-JAT binary. I'm not saying that this is alone responsible for the results yesterday, but this is a big picture sort of like uh, social realignment that has happened in Haryana politics. And just to show you these two, two uh, sets of data, one, I just plotted what happened to INLD and its breakaway faction, JJP. So the blue line represents its vote share and the red line represents the number of seats it had won. In last 20 years, uh, INLD and JJP, so JJP became a new party in 2019. Before that, it was just INLD, used to have 25% vote share, which declined below 25 in 2014. And by 2019, the combined vote share of INLD, JJP was uh, around 17%. And this election, they have crashed to 5%. And that's also getting reflected in number of seats that they have won. So over the years, JJP INLD has declined and it has given, uh, created a, a space for the BJP to enter into the state. And this is my last slide and end here. Uh, for those of you who understand the regions of Haryana, this is 2019 map, 2024 map. Uh, this is the southern belt of Haryana, a little bit more urban. So you have... Uh, Faridabad, Gurgaon, uh, Rewadi, Bhivadi. Uh, this is the belt where BGP does relatively well and it has done well even in this time. Uh, the second sort of like belt is this one, which is what is known as GT Karnal uh, uh, road belt. Again, you have a little bit more urban population. BJP picks up more seats there. But it's the central part where, uh, you know, Jats are in a much more uh, uh, dominant position numerically. Last time, you would see shades of green with blue in this part of uh, uh, the region. What has happened that INLD or JJP largely had won some of these seats. This time, you don't see uh, you know, uh, JJP getting seats here. It's two seats won by INLD on this side. Uh, largely, what has happened that INLD, JJP also got squeezed to these pockets uh, where BJP was able to convert some seats uh, with a smaller uh, margin at a higher rate. So I'll stop here. And now let me introduce my uh, panel to you. Uh, 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 so thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Uh, first, let me uh, you know introduce you to Professor Rekha Chaudhary. Uh, she was former head of the Department of Political Science at University of Jammu. She has written several books on politics of Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, welcome, ma'am. Thank you for uh, joining us today. Uh, Professor Ajaz Ashraf Vani, he teaches political science at University of Kashmir. Uh, he has several articles on the politics of the state and very recently, a couple of months back when the elections were announced, I had read a very interesting piece by him uh, on the India Forum. Uh, we'll be also joined by uh, uh, Professor Kushal Pal. I'm not sure whether he's here or not. He's going to talk about Haryana. He has been tracking Haryana politics for a very, very long time. Uh, and uh, we also have uh, Sanya Dinda. Uh, Sanya is assistant editor at The Print. 
she traveled both the state of Jammu uh, and Kashmir as well as Haryana and had written some interesting reportage. I think uh, if you read her Haryana pieces, uh, perhaps uh, you would get an inkling of why the results turned out the way it turned out to be. Uh, thank you, Professor Kushalpal, for joining. Uh, uh, Professor Kushalpal is uh, principal of Indira Gandhi National College at uh, Kurushetra. In fact, his college is in Ladwa uh, uh, town or city, which happens to the to be the assembly constituency of Chief Minister Nayab Singh Sani. So, uh, Professor Kushalpal might be neighbor or friend of the Chief Minister but we'll hear from him. So let, let me start with uh, Professor Rekha Chaudhary on uh, were the results, you know, uh, in Jammu and Kashmir surprising or on expected line? And what do you think were the important issues that uh, shaped the verdict that uh, we saw yesterday? Yeah, there was an element of surprise, but uh, also like some things were expected as well. In the sense that... Uh, this was an election which was very important, which had taken place after 10 years. Uh, last election was held in 2014. Uh, but more importantly, this was an election, assembly election, which had taken place after the abrogation of the Article 370 and the bifurcation and uh, downgrading of the state into union territory. So naturally, there were a lot of uh, responses, uh, not only in Kashmir, but also in Jammu region, and uh, election was supposed to reflect those responses. What I found very interesting about the election process was that in the process of campaigning itself, I think for the first time, uh, a lot of voices were heard. Means I do not, because that's what we felt that Kashmir had been silent and even Jammu had been silent after 2019. But whatever was the nature of the silence, that silence was totally broken after uh, the campaign started. And uh, that was, I think, I found the most unexpected element of the election. Means all kinds of uh, responses were articulated from one end to another end. Uh, then the uh, what I find about the election is something which is in continuity with 2014 and some things which changed. Uh, starting with the voting process, it means there lot. It has been uh, very much uh, celebrated. There was a very good participation. It has been a good participation, but in terms of numbers and percentages, uh, the, the overall percentage of uh, vote share was lower than the 2014 elections. Um, but certainly, there was an improvement in certain constituencies, which were uh, like where there was a uh, operation of a bicot politics. In some of those constituencies, people did turn up for the first time, and I think that was because of the process of mobilization and also. Uh, because that is the only space left in Kashmir where people can actually um, uh, operate in uh, in terms of politics. In the sense that you can see the engineer Rashid factor, which was an important factor during the parliamentary election in terms of Kashmir's politics, that this was this became a this became a factor in which this was that was in a surprise element in uh, during the parliamentary election. He represented a constituency which was called a uh, sentiment constituency, like uh, that is a local sentiment which was represented by Engineer Rashid. Uh, at that time, I think people uh, made, a, made, made a statement by, by not voting for Umar Abdullah and, um, and uh, electing Engineer Rashid. Uh, but it, it was clearly seen that this time, um, this factor could not operate at all in terms of uh, the, the means only one seat could be won by the uh, by, by, by the party of engineer Rashid. And even uh, in fact, uh, by the time the election took place, it was a very crowded election it means no, uh, at, in no other election, you see that it was so, so many candidates, so many parties. And they were there and they were and there were a lot of uh, it was quite hyper in terms of that kind of competition. Uh, so one thing means whether it was jamaat e islami whether it was engineer Rashid's party and whether it was independence means the whole proportion of independence was quite large in terms of the total candidates. But in the end, what why we saw in Kashmir was that people gave a clear message and uh, not only 
all this uh, uh, muddled process was cleaned up and people voted in favor of one party national conference uh, but, uh, but but it was like lots of uh, the political parties which had emerged in after 2019 like apni party it was again with a very lot of fanfare that party had started and in fact the crisis which pdp faced uh, and you can see the crisis uh, in terms of the seats which pdp has returned from being the, uh, the the largest party in 2020 uh, 2014 but it had got the uh, 28 seats to its uh, number being reduced to 3 and its uh, vote share also being drastically reduced so pdp has uh, has faced the major brunt of of the creation of these new parties like uh, apni party and uh, then it was felt uh, at that point of time the narrative was maybe new kashmir will have a new kind of leadership new kind of political elite so i think ultimately um, that that whole thing has been rejected uh, the traditional parties nc uh, found its strength right in 2020 with the district uh, development council elections. ANSI had found it strength that it is a party of the future. It's going to stay and it is will be there for the times to come. Uh, and it had its cadre and uh, the way PDP was affected by the exodus of its founder, founding members, exodus of its MLAs to other parties. It did not means that it happened uh, to some extent with with NC, but it did not affect the NC as much because of its cadre, it because of its whole history, its relationship with the people. So it did survive, and it that it emerged as a resilient party. And you see what has happened with NC is that in um, it had lost its hegemonic position in Kashmir's politics in two thousand two. It mm. was till 2002, till, till 1996, the uh, only dominant party of Kashmir and dominant party of the state because of that. Uh, in 2002, because of the emergence of, uh, of PDP, the, this party uh, now was uh, no more the hegemonic party. It was only the leading party. Mm -hmm. In 2014, it lost, it lost even its status as a leading party. It emerged as a third party. In. So that was worse from the worst performance of NC in 2014. It has emerged as the best uh, party performing party in 2024. In Jammu region, what sees is the, that's, uh, what is the most, uh, again, I see something in continuity. 2014 had already given us this mandate when uh, BJP had swept the Jammu region, and especially the Hindu um, majority areas when it had got 25 seats and, and uh, uh, very uh, uh, substantial vote share from that region. Uh, so to that extent, it is in continuity with that. But what is uh, surprising or what is uh, uh, the other factor that we see that this is the only party uh, which has got as many seats, it is followed by NC. Mm. In the process, uh, the Congress has been decimated. Whatever seat the Congress has got, it has got in Kashmir region. In Jammu mm. region, it could get only one seat. So that was because... and. It was very surprising because and um, uh, 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 till the beginning of election, it was mm. even BJP was finding it difficult to to start the electoral process because um, uh, most probably they were getting this inkling that people were not very happy with the with the BJP and then and that, uh, that there were lots of issues uh, which were raised in Jammu region means. Mm. Beginning of abrogation of Article 370, there was a lot of celebration, but gradually people started feeling the pinch of the things which were changing. And mm. by this time, a number of issues were raised. For example, a very uh, unpopular decision uh, of, of the bar move being stopped. Mm. So mm. Jammu's economy getting impacted by that. Uh, bureaucrats controlling the, the uh, power uh, for such a long time. Uh, Jammu being um, uh, having uh, the impact of the outsider decisions being taken, contracts being given to the outsiders means non JNK people, uh, employment not being generated. So there were lots of issues which were there, which were which we, even the BJP members were aware that this, this these are the problem areas, and okay. it was expected that Congress would take advantage of all these factors and uh, and in the process will 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 do well. But what happened was Congress was nowhere to be seen. Congress bungled right from the beginning in the, means uh, the very wrong distribution of seats. It, despite the fact that everybody knew the delimitation had changed the, uh, the map of the constituencies. And they had to work earlier 
uh, and th the candidates did not even know their own constituencies by the time and mm. it was the last state when the candidates were announced there was no narrative which was built by the party there was no uh, local leadership which could take control of the party it was like everybody left on his own and uh, working on their own and worst of all the, what was expected is that the national leadership would come to 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 to, uh, to help the, the the local congress in, in any case with the with the with the uh, azad gulam nabi azad going out of the party it had created a congress crisis in the congress and that was i think uh, that was needed to be uh, compensated by the national leadership but the national leadership means whatever wherever whatever they did they did they went to kashmir and uh, that that had an impact but in jammu that the, the the impact was not there uh okay. last thing that i want to tell about this election is that uh this is this uh, this there are actually three units contesting uh, the the for which we can analyze the election one is kashmir one is jammu region and one is the mixed uh, areas of jammu region which is like hmm. uh, rajouri punch and uh, three districts of the ex uh, former Do doda districts uh, doda kishtwad and badarwa which are mixed population so we hmm. have one trend uh, one kind of uh, electoral politics for uh, hindu uh, plains of uh, jammu one uh, trend for kashmir and another third trend is for these areas mix mix well thank you so much uh, uh, professor chaudhry also putting things in a historical uh, context and, and 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 rightly pointing out that uh, congress perhaps not pulled its weight uh, in jammu and kashmir in fact omar abdullah uh, before the results came out, had said that Congress is not pulling its weight. And yesterday, he mentioned that many of the seats Congress won, they could have won that easily on their own. Uh, now, let me invite uh, uh, Professor Vani. Uh, sir, I have two sort of like uh, uh, straight questions uh, for you in that sense. One, there was expectation of all these smaller parties, some of which Professor Chaudhary also mentioned, such as Apni Party or candidates aligned with Engineer Rashid. Uh, he, he won Lok Sabha election maybe uh, also Gulam Nabi Azad uh, uh, doing well in some places. Uh, PDP, uh, of course, it was weakened, uh, but there was talks that you know, it won't uh, uh, be completely sort of like marginalized. But the results say that they had a difficult time. El Mufti also lost the elections. Uh, so one question is, why did all these sort of like uh, smaller parties or, or, or other forces got completely sidelined at this election and NC uh, uh, in national conference uh, dominated. What was the narrative that they used uh, uh, that they got most of the votes and seats and why did other uh, parties lost in the process? Okay. Thank you, Rahul. Uh, I think uh, what broadly Ma'am has told is absolutely in line with uh, what you have been arguing. Uh, you know, uh, surprises or unexpected expected lines or unexpected lines. I think there was, if you look back, say, parliamentary election, mm -hmm. and from parliamentary elections uh, to the announcement of the state election, I think there was a lot of uncertainty and unexpected, you know, what will happen. And there was this, because of the Umar Abdullah losing the election and engineer Rashid emerging, there was this, this, this element of fragmentation and other issues. And there was this concern that this, this may actually you know, have an impact on the assembly elections. And perhaps even the central leadership and, and BJP also perhaps uh, you know, thought on those lines. But once the campaign started, I think many things, if you were you know, connected with the grassroots, many things were becoming very clear even during the campaign. During the campaign, I think NC, uh, along with Congress also, but particularly NC, NC was able to catch a narrative, a build a narrative. And they had a very strong narrative this time that this is something, this election is not about power. It's mm. not about getting the cheer. This mm. election is about the identity. You know, we have to you know, prevent something very basic. And that was, uh, even, even in that context, 370 was mentioned. Uh, no abrogation of 370 that we will fight for it, but it was sort of it was not pushed that much as much as the restoration of statehood, the jobs, the other mm. things. So they took a they built a very strong narrative. They got a narrative that this election is something where we need to have a build a cohesive force in order to fight for the rights, the identity, restoration of statehood. 
and then later on the other jobs and other things mm. and that is something that stuck with the with the electorate and mm. in that process they could build this narrative that all the smaller parties independents etc etc they will act as a sort of a deterrent towards working that goal mm. we want to achieve that goal we need to have a very strong force a mm. cohesive force combined force Hmm. And that is, I think, something that the electorate, if you go through the narratives, even the TV, you know, smaller bites that the you know, voters gave to the TV channels, etc. And I, uh, we were also on the, the ground. We did certain, I was involved in a couple of hmm. surveys and my students. We could sense that, that people, hmm. even though certain voters who had affiliation maybe with the smaller party or a particular leader or an hmm. independent, this time around, they were thinking on different lines. Hmm. That it's not necessarily that they are ardent supporters, you no know, hardcore supporters of national conference. Hmm. But they saw national conference emerging as a force that could actually work for the collective sentiment or collective identity of the region of, hmm. of, of bringing the state. And, hmm. and that that's why you will find many former you know independents or smaller parties, Hassan Mir and others, many of those hmm. you know. Who, who use it to one, win one seat or two seats and have a very strong footing in their own constituencies. But this time, they all of them lost. Hmm. Alta Bukhari, others, Hakim Yasin, many others. Uh, uh, so, so this narrative was captured very well. And, and I think... Well, sir, if I may intervene here, is it was the narrative something like this, that uh, uh, which is what I heard, that NC managed to convince a lot of voters in the valley that other parties, so for example, PDP, because it had aligned with the BJP, uh, Engineer Rashid, just before the elections were let out on the bail, was the narrative then became that each of these formations are anyway after the elections may join BJP to form a government, right? And so it was also sort of like NC is the only party in that sense, what you were saying about collective, uh, representing collective identity and others had become sort of like, you know, had lost legitimacy on that count after uh, uh, 2019. Sorry. Yes. I, yes. I think for with, as far as PDP is concerned, National Conference didn't need to do anything. I think people mm -hmm. at large still have not forgiven the the PDP for aligning, although they have been trying everything after, you know, August 2015, sorry, 2019, to prove that we are against these decisions. They have taken a very strong, you know, position against the center or BJP government or decisions of the BJP government. But still, they have not been able to, to you know, get connected with the electorate as such. And secondly, hmm. we know that the, the, the way that party suffered after 2019 with all its leadership, all its structure gone, I don't think there was any need actually to focus on the PDP. In hmm. any case, even PDP itself were not expecting more than five, six seats. It was more, it was not for power. It was more about, you know, saying that we are also here to so mm -hmm. establish themselves. And there was this something that whatever happens, perhaps PDP will not repeat that, that, that mistake that they had done earlier. But they focused on the independents and the new smaller parties, mm -hmm. particularly, you know, making engineer Rashid and his release as a reference point. That mm. this is something, so many independents here, not so many in, in, in Jammu. So it's mm. again an attempt of consolidation in Jammu and fragmentation in, in, in Kashmir. And mm. in that case, perhaps they were also aware, as ma'am also said, that maybe Congress will do much better in Jammu. Uh, mm. but they wanted to consolidate here, that vote should not get fragmented. And as I mm. said, and this was resonating on the ground, that voters were convinced that if we go for smaller part, we divide the seats, divide the votes, there is mm. much chance, you no know, more chances that you know BJP may club cobble out uh, something, some and mm -hmm. the five nominated members mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. issue came again and again and again. And there was some set sort of you no know, legitimacy to this narrative given even by certain BJP leaders themselves. When they said, you no, know, often the reporters would put this question to BJP that why you are not fielding, you are you have been touting, you know, saying so much about what we did in Kashmir from last. Mm so many years, then why you are not fielding the candidates? And there was this, often this, you know, answer that we have certain like-minded people, like-minded independent, like-minded parties, which we are supporting, and then, mm -hmm. you know, they are there. So that actually also helped the national conference in that, in that process. 
and you will you will see that even to the extent PDP also even Sajad loan later on, mm -hmm. you know initially when engineer Rashid was released, Sajad was in his first conference actually tried to defend that we should not label everybody. Everybody is A, B, C team, and it's not good. And which is correct to a certain extent also. In a democracy, we should not have these labels, etc. But then it, later on, he also changed it. That why he was lazy, how he was lazy. Yeah. I made him leader. He did not become even my, how could he be of the people, loyal to the people, etc., etc. So he also had to get into those those narratives about whoever is the friend of the center is the you know, enemy of the people, etc. Et and that automatically happened. So what was the viable option? PDP was not. Mm. Sajat could not be. Apni party could not be. It was always about two or three seats. So mm. only viable a, a grassroots party with its presence in across the valley and as well as in some parts of Jammu was the national conference. And yes, the alliance, the pre-poll alliance, maybe results were not there as per the satisfaction. But when you are talked up to the people about this pre-poll alliance between national conference and, and, and Congress, they did say that it will help them. And it did oh. sort of, it at least in that imagination, it convinced people that they will get seats from there. They will, we, will, we, want, we need to consolidate here. We will get some seats in, from there. And then this you know, coalition will be able to form the government. So for that, yes. it was very important to consolidate here. So what we saw in this election was for the first time, probably, is there what you call as the consolidation of the Muslim vote around yes. an narrative, again, around an identity. We saw that consolidation in 2014 in Jammu around BJP, the Hindu consolidation. But this was something... Uh, while, Muslim uh, yeah. consolidation. It, okay. has its own, it has its own problems also later on. That it, yeah, yeah. I'll come, it come back to that. Uh, that's, that uh, after, that's what after happened. After some time. Uh, let me bring in Sanya on this question. Sanya, uh, first, like if you travel both to the Jammu and Kashmir region, uh, what kind of differences you saw in... I, uh, Rahul, I actually only traveled to uh, Kashmir and not okay. Jammu. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, uh, if, if you only went to Kashmir, given what you heard from uh, 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 Professor Chaudhary and Professor Vani, uh, what kind of sentiment you picked on the ground? Uh, yeah. uh, you know, uh, was 370 an issue uh, uh, or it's like a done deal, people have moved on? Uh, uh, what are they looking forward? And especially, you know, like the kind of collective identity thing which Professor Vani hinted at, uh, given the results that we have got, uh, how would this, like, you know, uh, were there sort of like uh, suspicion uh, of what might happen uh, uh, once the counting uh, day approaches? Uh, what kind of conversations you picked on the ground in Kashmir? I think uh, I'll what I'll say will probably be more sociological than political. So, and uh, um, But I think what Professor Chaudhary mentioned about silence, I think that was the first thing that struck me when I hit the ground there that there was a very, very palpable uh, culture of silence that had developed in Kashmir post-2019. And everyone, if you stayed with them long enough for them to be able to talk, they would say that this is a post-2019 phenomenon because uh, there is massive surveillance in the state. There is, uh, in universities, there is uh, there the fear of losing government jobs, the fear of saying something on social media. It's not just about journalists and professors and so on. Uh, very young children, adolescents would tell you that we are very conscious of what we post on social media. Everybody's social media is sanitized. So we have to look at what these elections may have meant for the people in Kashmir in the context of the silence. And I think what Professor Chaudhary said that this was perhaps the first legitimate and non-threatening tool of expression that, mm -hmm. through which they could say something. So mm -hmm. that is why this election was important. Now, what was the main sentiment that I felt? Uh, it was that we want to be treated normally, that we want to be, and it is a little complex because I, what I felt was that there is a strategic erasure of the past that is happening, not just at the level of the state, uh, because obviously the state would not want to talk about it, but also at the level of society, at the level of families, people mm. do not want to remember. Uh, there were young girls who would tell me our parents, our mothers don't want to talk about the past because they want to mm. protect us from that. Mm. So there is this strategic 
forgetting or a st- strategic erasure that is happening and that i think is kind of also depoliticizing the kashmiri mind in some sense mm-hmm. because you mm-hmm. don't want to talk about uh, political things about kashmir's uh, political history anymore mm-hmm. so um so that is one aspect where the the big assertion is that we want to be treated normally uh, and i think that is why nc becomes important because that it is that promise of normalcy it is that promise of um, statehood like every other indian uh, state we want to be treated like any other indian state uh, mm-hmm. the promise of jobs and the, also the promise of some kind of respect Hmm. uh so i think that's why nc becomes important but it's also important uh to think about if this is if this depoliticization of the mind is happening where is it finding expression because there it has to find expression somewhere and i think hmm. that is uh why, where the religious polarization becomes important because even on the streets and i spent a lot of time with women and young girls in kashmir not not talking about elections also but you know you see the hijab for instance as a massive phenomenon now uh, mm. which was not the case in the 90s you speak mm. you sit down with older women and talk to them and for them hijab was an imposition that they fought against but with mm. the younger generation who which is actually quite depoliticized the hijab becomes an expression of their identity so mm. uh, the, you know the, the, there was a blanket response when uh, that i used to get from uh, young girls who would actually be very defensive about their right to wear the hijab mm-hmm. which was it is our religious obligation their the what they implied was don't ask us further questions this is our religious obligation and when you sat with older women they would tell you the history of how they sort of battled they fought against this so i think uh it's very hard to tell what this election meant for the people in kashmir i think right now uh, the, the kashmiri mind is also in a politically twilight zone and i mm-hmm. think we should humbly accept that mm-hmm. no, no thank you so much uh, sanya i'll come back to you on haryana as well but let me bring uh, professor kushal pal uh, sir thank you for joining us uh first question i like is were you surprised by the result as every i everyone i know was about from, of the haryana results uh, what do you think uh, actually uh, happened uh, right uh, uh, most ground reports all kind of surveys had indicated a clear uh, congress uh, sort of victory but bjp seemed to have come from behind and uh, stashed a victory in that sense uh, uh congress uh, it seemed like like now in the hindsight uh it's a replay of what happened with congress in chatisgarh 2023 uh they were expected to win uh but couple of factors like factionalism independence bjp micromanaging but i think like uh and now uh, you know everyone is also talking about jart versus non jart polarization kind of thing so uh, i would like to hear uh, your uh, sort of like expression or you already knew since you come from chief minister's constituency sir you are on mute so you have to hit yes nahi abhi nahi you have ek aapke uh, you know ek mic bana hoga uh, niche jahan pe audio likha hoga thank you rahul uh, bhai ji and sorry for getting late because of some technical reasons everyone i think have to wait for me so honestly speaking uh, i would like to be bilingual hindi or english bilkul 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 wo jaise main pehle to karnal padhata tha to yahan to agar kisi din angrezi mein bol diya to bacche poochte the ye kya padha ke gaya hai aur to aur main abhi to aur main us area mein chala gaya hu <laughs> बहुत लोकल जहाँ पे हरियाणवी आपको बोलनी पड़ती है हालांकि वहां पढ़ाना कम पड़ता है बीइंग प्रिंसिपल आपको एक ही क्लास अलोटेड है लेकिन मुझे जो दो इश्यूज आपने रेज किए हैं पहला तो आपने बात रखी है कि इश्यूज क्या थे जी और दूसरा सरप्राइजिंग फैक्टर इश्यूज भी हैं और सरप्राइज बहुत बड़ा है इसमें कोई दो नहीं है बहुत बड़ा सरप्राइज है अभी जब चार महीने पहले चुनाव हुए तो उस वक्त किसान जवान पहलवान और संविधान ये तो तीन थे मैं चार मुद्दे बोल रहा हूँ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन का मुद्दा ये सब थे और 
कांग्रेस को आउट ऑफ टेन फाइव पार्लियामेंट्री कॉन्स्टिट्युएंसी पे जीत मिली थी और ऑलमोस्ट फोर्टी सेवन टू फोर्टी एट एग्जैक्ट मुझे नंबर ध्यान नहीं है वो असेंबली कॉन्स्टिट्युएंसी में लीड मिली थी तो तब से ही ये नेरेटिव बिल्ड हो गया था कि संभवतः आने वाला टाइम जो है वो हरियाणा में कांग्रेस का है और उसके पीछे कभी कभी अपना कंपैरिजन रहता है 2019 में 10 की 10 पे बीजेपी जीती थी तो और ये नैरेटिव बना था सत्तर पार हरियाणा सत्तर पार और बड़ी मुश्किल से बीजेपी को 40 सीटें मिली थी दस की दस पार्लियामेंट्री कॉन्स्टिट्युएंसी में जीत के बाद और कांग्रेस को इस बात का पश्चाताप हुआ था कि अगर हम थोड़ा सा संभाल लेते अपने काम को तो संभवतः हम जी सकते थे या सत्ता में आ सकते थे या सत्ता के नजदीक आ सकते थे जैसे बीजेपी चालीस आके उनके साथ अलायंस कर लिया जेजेपी के साथ अगेन स्टेड इन पावर इस बार के इश्यूज अभी भी वही थे आज भी हैं मैं अभी चूंकि बीजेपी सत्ता में आ गई तो मैं ये कह दू जी इशूज खत्म हो गए अग्निवीर भी नहीं है अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट भी नहीं है ये सब एकदम से गायब हो गए ऐसा कुछ नहीं इश्यूज संविधान पहलवान जवान और ये सब ऐसे हैं राधर मैं और आपको बताऊं कि ये इश्यूज राधर और एग्रावेट हुए हैं जैसे मैं आपको बताता हूं अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट का मुद्दा है अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट का जो इशू है उसके ऊपर अग्निवीर का तड़का है चलू चार साल की नौकरी है नो बडी वुड लाइक के अपने बच्चे को चार साल के भेज दे और आस के जो गाँव है वो खाली हो चुके हैं अब बच्चे छोड़ के विदेशों में जा रहे हैं ठीक है और ऊपर से जो बच गए वो ड्रग का शिकार है मेरे को जो बहुत भयंकर स्थिति है मैं हर रोज पकड़ता हूँ बेटा ये नहीं करना वो उनको समझाता भी हूँ राउंड लगाता हूँ जी तो इससे वो सिचुएशन एग्रावेट हुई है ऊपर से किसानों का मुद्दा एज इट इज है कोई एमएसपी नहीं मिल रही है उनको वो अब भी बैठे हैं और ऊपर से कभी कभी पूर्व मुख्यमंत्री उनकी स्टेटमेंट आ जाती है किसानों को लेके या कंगना रनौत की स्टेटमेंट आ जाती है तो वो ये जड़े पे नमक छिड़कते रहते हैं ठीक है तो मैं ये कह रहा हूं कि वो मुद्दे आज भी बेरोजगारी के मुद्दे या संविधान के इश्यूज वो आज भी हैं और उनका कांग्रेस को पार्लियामेंट्री इलेक्शंस में फायदा हुआ अभी क्यों नहीं हुआ सर अब अभी आ रहा हूं अभी आ रहा हूं अब जबरदस्त फायदा हुआ और दलित वोटर्स कांग्रेस के पक्ष में कंसोलिडेट हुआ पहलवान के मुद्दे कारण से चूंकि उसको जाटों की बेटियां थी वो बाद में उसको सिर्फ जाट ही डिक्लेयर कर दिया गया बेटी तो सबकी कॉमन होती है लेकिन वो एक कास्ट के साथ उसको एसोसिएट कर दिया गया तो उससे और किसानों में भी जो है क्योंकि मेजोरिटी ऑफ किसान फॉर जाट तो उससे जाट भी कांग्रेस के पक्ष में कंसोलिडेट हुई ठीक है ये मैं आपको पार्लियामेंट्री इलेक्शन की बात बता रहा हूँ इसका नुकसान क्या हुआ मैं आपको बता रहा हूँ कांग्रेस के लिए पर्टिकुलरली धीरे धीरे ये नेरेटिव बिल्ड होता चला गया कि आने वाला टाइम कांग्रेस के लिए बहुत कंफर्टेबल है कांग्रेस को कोई दिक्कत आने वाली नहीं और कांग्रेस के अंदर एक भयंकर दिक्कत है यहाँ पे पहले से सीएम के लिए दौड़ शुरू हो जाती है कि सीएम कौन बनेगा ये लड़ाई साइड बाय साइड स्टार्ट हो ठीक है मुद्दे जो कितो थे और इनके चलते हुए कांग्रेस ने तीन पॉइंट मैं आपको बता रहा हूं बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट देखो बड़ी बड़ी थ्योरी लिखने लिए ठीक है कि जहां दिल्ली में चुनाव होता है दिल्ली में जो सरकार है वही सरकार हरियाणा में आती है जाट नॉन जाट लेकिन मैं आपको बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट बात बता रहा हूँ कांग्रेस अब जो लूज किया कांग्रेस ने बड़े तीन इंपोर्टेंट बातें हैं राहुल भाई वो मैं आपको बता रहा ये नैरेटिव चारों तरफ से था आपने योगेंद्र जी को सुना होगा कि या तो तूफान है या आंधी है या इस तरीके को सत्तर पार जाएंगे जी और इंक्लूडिंग कुशलपाल किसी को भी इस बात का एहसास या अनुमान नहीं था कि कांग्रेस पचास से नीचे किसी भी कीमत पर नहीं आएगी जी मेरे से संदीप भाई ने बात की थी मैंने उसको कहा पचास प्लस है उनचास नहीं आएंगे मैंने खुद ये स्टेटमेंट दी है ओके okay, कोई बात नहीं सर कारण क्या था इंक्लूडिंग बीजेपी का कार्डर जो है ना वो भी इस बात को मान नहीं रहा था कि हमारी सरकार आएगी इस बार ठीक है अब सर कारण बताता मैं आपको मैं करनाल में सेटल हूं इस वक्त करनाल के पास एक छोटा सा कस्बा है इंद्री इंद्रिय कॉन्स्टिट्युएंसी है जी इंद्री में एक व्यक्ति को टिकट दी गई दूसरा व्यक्ति पिछले पंद्रह बीस साल से ग्राउंड पे काम कर रहा है ठीक है उसके पास पंद्रह से बीस पच्चीस हजार पच्चीस हजार वोट की व्यवस्था है जिसको टिकट देगी ना तो उसने ना पार्टी लीडरशिप ने इस बात को नहीं पूछा जाके आप कहाँ रहते हैं आपका क्या कर रहे हैं या आपको हमारे साथ आना चाहिए क्योंकि उसके दिमाग में ये बात थी कि जीत तो निश्चित है इसलिए कोई परेशान होने की जरूरत नहीं है ठीक है ऐसे में आपको नीलोखेड़ी का एग्जाम्पल दे रहा हूँ नीलोखेड़ी बिल्कुल करनाल के नजदीक है नीलोखेड़ी एक पैरासूट कैंडिडेट लेके आए 
नीलो खेड़ी कांग्रेस के लिए सबसे ज्यादा एप्लीकेंट्स थे अस्सी एप्लीकेंट्स थे जस्ट इमेजिन टिकट सीकर बाहर से एक व्यक्ति को दस दिन पहले टिकट दे दी गई और एक व्यक्ति मेरे पड़ोस में रहता है वो हर रोज मुझे खबर दिखाता था देखो डॉक्टर साहब प्रोफेसर साहब मैंने आज यहाँ धरना किया आज मैं वहां गया था आज मैंने ये काम किया और ये लोग कहा गए उसके बाद नो बॉडी कॉन्टेक्टेड दम जी ये मैं बहुत सारी असेंबलीज का आपको बता सकता हूँ नहीं नहीं अब असेंबली वाइज नहीं जाते तीन फैक्टर्स पे फोकस हाँ, करते ना तो ए, एक, एक, एक ये फैक्टर है कि हाँ, जो इनके अपने थे उनको इग्नोर किया गया बाहर से ज्वाइन करवाते रहे ठीक है ठीक नंबर वन नंबर टू मैं और एक इंटरेस्टिंग आपको बताता हूँ अम्बाड़ा का आपने सुना होगा अम्बाड़ा कंटोनमेंट में नहीं जाते ना फैक्टर्स पे रहते हैं तो देन वी कैन है लार्जर कॉन्वर्सेशन थियरी यही होती है सर और कुछ थियरी नहीं होती है नहीं उस, उस, उससे मैं आपको बता रहा हूँ वो ए, एक इंपॉर्टेंट बात है मैं, मैं इसके इसके रीजन आपको फिर समझ में अगर आप उसको माइन्यूट नहीं स्टडी करो तो बात समझ में नहीं आएगी सेकंड पॉइंट अभी थोड़ा टाइम ज्यादा टाइम लूंगा आपका सेकंडली जितने भी एक तो ये इस कैटेगरी का था दिक्कत दूसरी कांग्रेस का दिक्कत क्या थी कि जितने भी इंडिपेंडेंट खड़े हुए उन्होंने कांग्रेस को थर्ड प्लेस पर भेज दिया अगर आप उन दोनों की मतलब टोटल करोगे तो वो बीजेपी से कहीं ज्यादा है और तीसरी बात एग्जिस्टिंग एमएलएस को टिकट दिया उनके खिलाफ एंटी इनकमर्सी बीजेपी से कहीं ज्यादा थी तो तीन बात तो मैं ये आपको बता रहा हूं और इस बात को बीजेपी सेंस भी नहीं कर पाई थी लेकिन उसके बावजूद एक और जो इशू था बहुत भारी इशू था वो ये था कि दो में और दो में जो बीजेपी ने जाट नॉन जाट किया था एक्चुअल में इस बार कांग्रेस ने कर दी ओके वो इस बार कांग्रेस ने कैसे किया कि हफ्ता पहले सभी लोगों ने चिल्लाना शुरू कर दिया सिर्फ हुडा साहब को इंप्रेस करने के लिए कि सीएम तो हुडा साहब ही बने और इसकी वजह से कांग्रेस को जाट बेल्ट में भारी नुकसान और जो इंडिपेंडेंट थे उसमें भी मैक्सिमम कैंडिडेट्स जाट्स थे जिन्होंने कांग्रेस को नुकसान पहुंचाया इस तरीके से यह तो हुआ कांग्रेस का पक्ष जी नवाई कम टू बीजेपी जी बीजेपी ने 12 मार्च को सैनी साहब को सीएम बनाया था खट्टर हाँ। साहब को रिप्लेस करके ये इनको पता था कि बहुत स्ट्रॉन्ग एंटी इनकम सी है इसलिए खट्टर साहब को बदल दिया डिप्टी को हटा दिया पहले और उसके बाद 10 इनके मंत्री हार गए तो इस बात में तो कोई द्वारा नहीं एंटी एंटी इनकम सी है तो उस एंटी इनकम सी को बीट करने के लिए इन्होंने मुख्यमंत्री को बदला डिप्टी को हटा दिया पहले ठीक है ठीक है उसके बाद भी इसको हटाने के बावजूद लोकसभा में कांग्रेस को ठीक से मतलब पांच सीटें आगे बराबर बराबर आगे इनको पता लगे स्ट्रॉन्ग एंटी इनकम है ठीक है सीएम सैनी को लेके आने के पीछे ओबीसी को कंसोलिडेट करना था ठीक है 12 मार्च से लेके अप्रैल मई तक कंसोलिडेट नहीं कर पाए लेकिन इस वक्त आते आते अक्टूबर तक सीएम सैनी साहब को इस बात का फायदा मिला और वो ओबीसी को कंसोलिडेट करने में सफल रहे इधर से क्या हुआ सैलजा दस दिनों के लिए प्रचार नहीं करती है ओके okay. लीडरशिप इस बात को भाप नहीं रही है कि सैलजा प्रचार में नहीं आ रही है जो अभी अभी सिरसा से ढाई लाख या सवा दो लाख वोटों से जीती है बिग लीडर केंद्र हुड्डा साढ़े तीन से जीते थे वो लगभग सवा दो ढाई लाख के बीच मुझे एग्जैक्ट याद नहीं है इन्होंने मीडिया के माध्यम से जो खबरें चली जब बीजेपी ने यह प्रचार करना शुरू कर दिया कि ये तो दलित लीडर का अपमान करते हैं तब उस स्थिति को संभाला वो भी किसने संभाला सेंट्रल लीडरशिप लोकल लीडरशिप ने उसको नहीं बोधर किया वो भी जबरदस्ती ऐसे हाथ मिलवाए गए स्टेज पर खड़े होके ये प्रोजेक्ट करने की कोशिश की कि दोनों एक ही है कोई दिक्कत वाली बात नहीं लेकिन उसका नुकसान लगातार हो चुका था और जो इधर से कांग्रेस के वर्कर्स ने इवन रिस्पॉन्सिबल लीडर्स ने ये कहना शुरू कर दिया कि हुडा साहब ही बनेंगे चूंकि और मीडिया ने भी इस बात को प्रमाणित कर दिया कि सेवेंटी टू जो सेवेंटी जो टिकट है वो हुडा साहब के कहने से दी गई ये बात एस्टेब्लिश भी हो गई थी सो सो मेरे ख्याल से आप ये कह रहे हैं तीन चीजें एक तो कांग्रेस में ओवर कॉन्फिडेंस दूसरा आप कह रहे हैं कि फैक्शनलिज्म था टिकट डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन गलत हुआ इंडिपेंडेंट्स ने उनको मुश्किलें खड़ी करी और तीसरा आप कह रहे हैं कि कांग्रेस की तरफ से जाट वर्सेस नॉन जाट हो गया और कुमारी शैलजा और कई ऐसे लीडर्स को तवज्जो नहीं मिली आई कम बैक टू यू सर लेट मी ब्रिंग सान्या अगेन सिंसानिया ऑल्सो रोड कपल ऑफ पीसेज ऑन हरियाणा एक चीज मतलब सानिया यू रोड दिस ऑन अक्टूबर थर्ड विच इज कि आर एस एस हैड नॉट मोबलाइज और वॉज इंट एक्टिव ड्यूरिंग द लोकसभा इलेक्शन फॉर बीजेपी बट इट बिकेम मोर एक्टिव इन असेंबली इलेक्शन एंड सेकेंड क्वेश्चन 
which is like what seems to be happening that uh, BJP, uh, wherever it's power in the states, uh, after the Lok Sabha verdict, uh, uh, they have, uh, uh, you know, uh, started uh, sort of like Ladli Behna kind of scheme. Uh, so whether that played some role uh, for women voters, if you got a chance to speak to them. So, uh, Tanya, just a second, uh, just a, and, and I'll also request uh, everyone who's an audience, if you have questions, can you pl please put it on Q&A box so that I can ask to my panelists uh, in the next round. Yes, Sanya, please go ahead. So, uh, Rahul, the question of RSS, I think that is uh, important, not as important as people are making it out to be after the results, because okay. I think uh, people were so shocked uh, with the results, so they were ready to latch on to anything uh, to basically explain uh, the results. So, obviously, RSS cannot be uh the, the only factor it was one factor um uh, yes. but i think it's an important factor of uh in the lok sabha elections for instance uh not just in uh haryana in several parts of uh the country we know that uh and i was traveling mostly in uttar pradesh during the uh, lok sabha elections rss cadres were uh not campaigning for the bjp uh and this is something that uh not the leadership of, of course but uh, mid level karyakartas mid level state level uh, leaders would tell you that they are very upset with how arrogant the bjp has become uh, the, the rss was not uh, involved in uh, ticket distribution during lok sabha elections at all and this uh, and so much so that in, even when they were giving suggestions they were largely ignored now mm -hmm. um, and we saw the Lok Sabha uh, results, what they were. And since then, there has been sort of public spats, not spats, but some kind of um, uh, comments exchanged between the RSS leadership and the BJP and so on. Now, what I sensed in Haryana, the moment I went there, and I was mostly traveling in two constituencies, I traveled very briefly, the RSS cadres were very, very enthused. Uh, they were the entire machinery, and this is something that very senior RSS uh, leaders in Haryana would tell me, the entire machinery is working to campaign for uh, the BJP. But I think we need to pay more attention to what does it mean when RSS campaigns for BJP. And for that, we need to look at what the RSS Karyakarta does or what does the RSS Karyakarta represent at the ground level during non-election time also. Because why mm. is it that the RSS Karyakarta has more legitimacy? Because mm. with political with uh, political parties, there is some kind of suspicion, there's a trust deficit, which RSS Karyakartas don't have. So they, mm. uh, because they are seen as apolitical, they, they have that kind of social trust so it's not just going door to door, uh, distributing voter slips with the BJP parchi on it, which they did in, at a very large level this time. But it's also about the feedback that the RSS gives the BJP. It's mm. micro feedback that the RSS gives, uh, the Karyakartas give BJP. We've spoken about Agni Veer, for example. In, in fact, even the suggestion for, of changing the chief minister uh, before uh, the elections, in many people say it was coming mostly from the RSS, and it was uh, it, so that helped the BJP at all uh, a lot. Mm -hmm. If we talk about Agni Veer, that is a feedback that RSS was also uh, was giving to the BJP. If we talk about a uh, um, very crucial feedback that RSS Karyakartas gave BJP was that the anti incumbency is not against BJP; it's against individual leaders. So okay. they would also then tell the BJP this time that just switch the candidate yahan ka wahan kar do wahan ka yahan kar do so they had a massive say so th th that was of course one factor uh, as regards uh, the schemes are concerned for it, again here is where rss again becomes very important because they are working throughout the year there is something yeah. called the property uh, pehchan patra in haryana for the example mm. okay, against there was a lot of resentment against that because it had made uh, deeds and all very difficult they again the rss karyakarta before the election makes the process simpler for uh, for, for uh, ordinary people. So that is mm -hmm. why when this person goes, who have policy feedback bhi de rahe hai, BJP ko, who ek bridge bhi hai government ke beech mein aur aam janta ke beech mein, that is why when they campaign, that it gives that kind of a boost to the BJP as it did in Haryana. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, uh, Sanya. Uh, again, I'll request uh, members of audience, if you have questions, just 
put on a q and a box and now i will take them uh, 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 to my panelists uh, you cannot ask questions so the only way to uh, you know is to put on q and a uh, let me now invite again uh, professor rekha choudhury and uh, uh, vanisha uh, i think uh, what is clear from the electoral uh, results and some of the questions that people have asked on q and a box is uh, that there is now a clear divide between jammu and kashmir in terms or you can also make it as uh, professor choudhury mentioned about uh, three different parts of uh, jammu and kashmir and in fact you could think of them as two parts right one is hindu majority jammu uh, and then you have uh, Muslim majority districts, be it part of Jammu or Kashmir. Uh, they have voted differently. How easy or difficult it would be to now govern uh, uh, any party, whether like BJP comes to power uh, uh, at some point in coalition or now NC Congress coalition. Is there like, how do they see the future of this like uh, 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 region together uh, and governance challenges. Professor Chaudhary and then uh, one sir. I would still like to insist on the three parts because... Uh, okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah, this reason being that uh, because you simplify and make it communal, uh, like it's it's regional come re religious issue. Mm. And I think religion is as important as the religion is. So mm. I think that that needs to, that's why I'm saying that there are not necessarily the Muslims of Jammu region think the same way as it's not the same identity issue for the Muslims of Jammu region as it is for the Kashmiris. It's not mm. Article 370 and the sentiments are not the same here as they are in Kashmir. So I insist on this third thing because that's mm. a big one. Yeah. Mm. So certainly this election has shown a big challenge for the government because the mm. it's a polarized, uh, regionally polarized. And the, the greatest difficulty which this government is going to face is that how to represent the Hindu uh planes of jammu in the government because when there is no possibility because congress has not done anything over here so so that would be the biggest challenge for and in the absence of that i think there is already the polarization between kashmir and jammu region already there is a feeling of uh, um, uh, a historical feeling of historical neglect and exclusion in the power politics in jammu region mm -hmm. and because because it has been mainly Kashmir has been not only center of uh, power politics, but also a center of attention because of the conflict situation. So there is a very, very psychological feeling of being excluded. So that feeling of being excluded might be accentuated. And I fear that there is going to be uh, another kind of response which will emerge out of it. Uh, already on the fringes, we have uh, this demand for a separate state for Jammu. Mm. So, that demand might uh, be now means that we will get some some kind of strength over here, uh, but mm. otherwise it will depend upon uh, like how does and BJP being in opposition means mm. uh, forming the government BJP in opposition and also uh, what would be the position of NC vis a vis vis a vis the government of India in the sense like what kind of relationship do they have. Uh, mm. that will also have its impact on Jammu's politics. So I do not see that things are going to be very comfortable. And I think uh, NC Riala Umar Abdullah realizes this fact. And he has been talking about it. He's talking about giving some kind of psychological relief to Jammu. So uh, I think that that is one very, very important factor and which the government will have to uh, think. But it's a, it's a question already there is militancy in Jammu region. Mm. Already uh, from Kashmir, and it has become a security issue. Already uh, the, the 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 equations have changed so far as uh, Kashmir and Jammu are concerned. So I think the central government will have to play a very very uh, means rather than making it a BJP versus NC because since two thousand nineteen it has been a BJP versus NC issue. Uh, the BJP people have been saying that we want any kind of, kind of leadership other than NC and PDP. They are mm. welcoming anybody else other than NC and PDP. So showing their resentment for NC very clearly. I think mm. now there's a need for change, need for reconciliation. Sorry, sorry. sorry. No, no. So there is a need for reconciliation at that level. Like now there is a government and it helps the Indian interest 
if there is no such friction between the center and and the state and also if the statehood is restored uh, the, at the earliest if the statehood is restored and with the full powers it is not like a delhi kind of arrangement this will hmm. strengthen the the state government and also that if if if, uh, if uh, bjp doesn't play the oppositional politics only it also plays uh, i'll say the national politics and uh, i think bridging the gulf. constructive and bridging kind of politics thank you uh, uh, as a sub uh, two questions do you think uh, uh, these other parties uh, in sort of like foreseeable future they will have any kind of recovery uh, or now it's a settled question that kashmir politics will revolve around uh, national conference conference and others will have a, a difficult time to what kind of like reconciliatory gestures uh, you expect uh, from sort of like uh, nc uh, leadership not just from omar abdullah but you know like the srinagar mp and other uh, uh, people or uh, you know uh, it's the conflict uh, that will keep a uh, uh, national conference uh, uh, sort of like dominant in the Kashmir region and BJP dominant in the Jammu region? Uh, Rahul, I think two uh, sets of points on two issues. One is that mm -hmm. the, what is going to be immediately done you know, because of this polarization and other things. I think added to that polarization issue is the fact that this, after the amendments brought to the you know, State Reorganization Act, this is going to be the weakest, you know, chief minister and assembly. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. most of the powers are with the LG. Uh, there are now two things, like immediately Umar Abdullah today said in the statement that, look, law and order, other things that are, you know, somebody asked him a question about the militancy in Jammu, etc. He said that law and order is not with us. Mm -hmm. uh, it is with the LG, so they have to see it. So I think there has to be a multi-pronged strategy with this. We have seen mm. a long bureaucratic go governance here, which mm. people are now, I think, very much fed up and needs to be thought. Then you have to, you know, how do you reconcile between the different regions? Like Ma'am said, three regions that are, but basically about it. So Umar Abdullah also has been talking about this. So mm. can there be like something that Umar Abdullah and the NC leadership comes out, you know, very boldly and says, Okay, let's have a deputy chief minister from that region. Mm. Okay, so immediate sort of reconciliation, a minister from the from other region because the, so there are certain sources like the three, uh, no, three or four independents may be joining the the national conference. Uh, Parallel and others they have been actually mm -hmm. with the national conference. So take those steps immediately. Have a deputy chief minister from that region. Have a minister from the other part. I don't know, mm. try to that reconciliation. But it essentially also has to be the other side that how much the central government and the LG administration will show the magnanimity mm. about allowing that administrative sort of coordination, cordial relations between the different sets of center, LG administration and the, 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 the assembly or the chief minister. So I think Omar has you know, hinted towards that, that we yeah. want to have a reconciliatory approach and I think here only, the fact that Congress has very less number of you know, MLAs in this, Maybe. that might be a positive for that relationship to develop. Because NC if, also had more If, if the other independents also join the National Conference, they have the majority on their own. And you mm. may also see that LG might think differently or administration may think differently about the nominated five members so they're mm. not create a problem for this government. So mm. he, has, he has talked about that we believe in the honorable prime minister that he has been talking yes. about you no know, restoration of statehood so it could be mutually how there's no room i think at this point of time for the 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 chief minister or the the you know national conference government to have a sort of a confrontation with the center or the lgn mm -hmm. but also it needs to come from that side also yes yes is this these minor things or could, could be major issues major binding factors for that and as far as the you know national conference dominating this surface i think we have seen in the it's very difficult to predict no no space is occupied for every time no all the time we have seen highs and lows and you know Pardon. changes pdp at the one time was nowhere then it suddenly came in 2002 2008 and became a major force 
national mm. conference constantly was in a decline from 2002 and all of a sudden because jammu and kashmir do give you those opportunities and it's like who catches at what point of time uh, yeah. so so i would say that you know they are relegated to the background they will not become become important but only time will tell but this is the time of national conference for certain and mm. i think it's the best time that central government and the national conference so i'm deliberately keeping inc out because that is that that, that somehow has been relegated to the background uh, to okay. work cordially and look forward for the larger interest of the nation for the larger interest of the state of jammu and kashmir uh, union territory and look forward to build a, a better future for it great thank you uh, so there are questions related to exit polls in a week from now we'll have another session just on exit polls so we'll talk about that later on there is a question on party system party systems at national level don't change with every round of elections so you know uh, there are uh, interesting set of papers that will come uh, uh, later this year in uh, studies in Indian politics and EPW, and I think they will give a better picture. But let me uh, get uh, Dr. Kushal Pal here uh, uh, to reflect on sir, two questions. One, I think, you know, I completely agree with you when you said all of the issues that you mentioned, Jawan, Kisan, Pahlwan, economic anxiety, Samidhan, those issues were present there. What I'm asking you here is that BJP ka apna voter, jise aap maan lije, aap usse non jat voters kehna chahte hai. उसने इस पर क्यों नहीं रिएक्ट करा क्या जाट सॉर्ट ऑफ लाइक कंसोलिडेशन उनके लिए इतना बड़ा मुद्दा बन गया कि अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट इकोनॉमिक एंजाइटी को थोड़ा पीछे रख दिया दूसरा सवाल सर आप जिस बेल से आते हैं पिछली बार बीजेपी को वहां उतनी सीट नहीं मिली थी करनाल कुरुक्षेत्र वाले रीजन में इस बार ज्यादा सीटें मिली तो क्या ये सिर्फ लाइक जो आपने फैक्टर्स गिनाए जैसे कुछ लोगों ने पूछा कुमारी शैलजा यही इम्पोर्टेंट थे या आप मतलब ये क्लिक मतलब मैं ये नहीं समझ पा रहा हूं ये जाट कंसोलिडेशन का चाहे मुद्दा हो चाहे बीजेपी अच्छी स्ट्रेटजी बना रही थी चाहे कांग्रेस ओवर प्ले कर रही थी ये तो सब कुछ ओपन में था ना तो फिर जो ग्राउंड रिपोर्ट्स हरियाणा से आ रहे थे इतने लोग ट्रैवल कर रहे थे आप भी इतने सर्वे करा सबने गलत क्यों भापा एक्चुअल में ए... राहुल भाई इसमें बड़ी इम्पोर्टेंट बात यह है कि हरियाणा की जो पॉलिटिक्स है वो आजादी से पहले और आजादी के बाद वो कास्ट बेस रही है रिलीजन या उस तरीके से काम नहीं करता जिस तरीके से यूपी में काम करता है क्योंकि वो एक रीजन में कन्फाइंड है मुस्लिम्स और वहां पे भी काम किया कि वही सभी कांग्रेस के पक्ष में कंसोलिडेट हुए देखो आइडेंटिटीज कैसे काम करती है और इशूज को कैसे पीछे धकेल देती है जी इशूज डोमिनेट किए मैंने आपको बताया लोकसभा के इलेक्शन में और इन द मीन टाइम सैनी साहब को टाइम मिल गया जो सीएम थे 12 मार्च के सीएम बनने के बाद कि धीरे धीरे ओबीसी वोटर्स को कंसोलिडेट किया इन्होंने अपने पक्ष में मैं आपको एक बड़ा इंपॉर्टेंट रीजन बताता हूं पहले ये लोग पहले सीएम साहब को करनाल से लड़ाया उसके बाद इनको लाडवा भेज दिया करनाल इनके लिए बहुत सेफ सीट थी फिर भी लाडवा भेज दिया क्योंकि करनाल विरोध करने वाला कोई नहीं है लाडवा तो गाँव में नहीं घुसने दिया और वही पिक्चर प्रोजेक्ट की कि देखो ये अगर सत्ता में आए तो कल तुम्हें ऐसे ही तंग करेंगे जैसे पहले किया था साथ में सुबह अखबार पढ़ो तो पूरा का पूरा फ्रंट पेज एडवर्टाइजमेंट से भरा होता था इनके सारे के सारे मतलब कांग्रेस के लीडर्स की फोटो के साथ ये हुआ था आपके साथ वो हुआ था तो दोनों लाल पे काम किया और तीसरा खुद कांग्रेस ने खुद मौका दे दिया मैंने ये बात पहले बोली है जी कि उन्होंने मतलब ये हफ्ता पहले तो भारी कॉम्पिटिशन था साहब को प्रोजेक्ट करने जेपी साहब जो अभी अभी सिरसा से जीते हिसार से जीते थे उन्होंने स्टेज से बात बोली है ये कमाएगा तो वही खाएगा हुडा साहब काम करे तो हुडा साहब को इसी हम बनाएंगे तो मैंने ये कहा कि जो कंसोलिडेशन का काम बीजेपी करती थी वो इन्होंने खुद को अपने आप अपने आप को आइसोलेट कर लिया इतना एहसास मैं आपको बता रहा हूँ बीजेपी को भी नहीं था जितना काम हुआ जी इनको भी इस बात का अंदाजा नहीं था कि इसकी वजह से इतना हो जाएगा इसीलिए okay. मैं कह रहा हूं कि जो कांग्रेस की साइकोलॉजी थी कांग्रेस की साइकोलॉजी में 80 एप्लीकेंट्स थे नीलोखेड़ी में मैं ये बात आपको इसलिए बता रहा था कि किसी को संभाल नहीं ली इन्होंने hmm. अपने किसी आदमी की संभाल नहीं ली आप दो चार हजार वोट से हार रहे हो तो अगर आपके सात दस लोग खड़े होते तो हजार हजार वोट तो उनके साथ वैसे आ जाते आपके 
तुम ये कह रहा हूँ इशूज आज भी है मैंने इसलिए कहा मैं अभी इस बात से मना कर दू की बीजेपी सरकार आ गई इशूज आज भी है जो की तो है किसानों के मुद्दे है बेरोजगारी का मुद्दा है लेकिन जो आइडेंटिटीज का मुद्दा है वो धीरे धीरे इतना शार्प हो गया ओबीसी कंसोलिडेट हो गए सीएम फेस बढ़ने से ओबीसी सीएम फेस बढ़ने से और दलित का इन्होंने जो एक तो प्रचार किया ऊपर से सैलजा जी को इन्होंने जिस तरीके से साथ लेना चाहिए था या मनाना चाहिए था आपका एक इतना स्ट्रॉन्ग लीडर दस दिन से नहीं है और आप उसको संभाल रहे हो सेंट लोकल लेवल पे फिर भी कोई ट्राई नहीं किया गया फिर भी कोई कोशिश नहीं की उसको मनाने की उसको समझाने की उसको साथ लगने की और सैलजा जी के जितने भी इंटरव्यू आए हैं उसमें उन्होंने हर बार ये बात की है कि वो नाखुश है अरेंजमेंट से तो वो आइडेंटिटी का इशू इतना स्ट्रॉन्ग हो गया कि जो इशूज आपकी दिन दिनचर्या से जुड़े हुए हैं जो आपकी जिंदगी से जुड़े हैं जो आपके सर्वाइवल के सवाल हैं जैसे योगेंद्र भाई नहीं कहते थे भाई देश बचाना है मतलब 2014 तो वो जो साइकोलॉजी है ना वो इतनी डोमिनेट कर गई आपके दिमाग में ये इतना एहसास नहीं था बीजेपी को भी और जिस तरीके से अभी सानिया जी बोल रहे थे कि आरएसएस ने उस तरीके से मैं आपको खुद ये बता रहा हूँ मेरे पास भी मतलब देखो आपके कॉलेज में जितना स्टाफ है टीचिंग नॉन टीचिंग में हर प्रकार के लोग आते हैं खुद अंदर से डिसअपॉइंटेड थे वो खुद बताया उन्होंने कि कोई काम करने का फायदा नहीं है खुद आर मतलब इवन के ऐसे भी जो आर के साथ भी जुड़े हुए हैं वो भी बता रहे थे कोई फायदा नहीं है मेहनत करने का आपको मैं और इसका बड़ा एग्जाम्पल दे रहा हूँ अट्ठाईस या उनतीस तारीख के बाद खुद प्रधानमंत्री जी नहीं आए उसके बाद ना अमित शाह आए उसके बाद खुद लाडुआ में हेमा मालिनी को बुलाया गया स्मृति रानी को बुलाया गया तो ये तो अंदर प्रेशर था कि हार नजर आए इस तरीके का दिमाग में नहीं था कि इतना बड़ा मैंडेट 2014 से बड़ा मैंडेट है ये 2014 में 47 सेवन सीट है अब अब 48 एट सीट है जी। उसमें जो मेजर जो मेजर जो डेंट लगा है वो कांग्रेस की अपनी गलती हुई जैसे लगा तो कांग्रेस ने अपने पैरों पर कुल्हाड़ी खुद मारी है वो कहते ना आत्मघाती गोड़ किया उस गोड़ में मैं आपको तीन क्योंकि मेरे आस है तीनों कॉन्स्टिट्युएंसी रोंडा में राठौर जी को टिकट मिला था चार लोग ऐसे थे जिनके पीछे पांच पांच हजार वोट आराम से थी कोई साथ नहीं आया ना उनको समझाने का प्रयास किया गया ना उनको उनसे बात करने की कोशिश की गई आप इलेक्शन पोलिंग के नेक्स्ट डे बात करो भाई क्या हाल है चिंता मत करना भाई आप दस दिन पहले उसको समझा लो आपने बहुत सारे लोगों को साथ जोड़ा है उसको साथ ले लिया उसको साथ ले लिया लेकिन अपने जो घर के लोग थे वो तो नाराज हुए बैठे थे ना अस्सी एप्लीकेंट थे कोई छोटी बात नहीं है नीलो खेड़ी से मैं आपको बता रहा हूँ एट्टी एप्लीकेंट इज नॉट ए स्मॉल फिगर जी जी और उसमें से चार पांच तो ऐसे जो बहुत ही प्रोमिनेंट है जो पिछले पांच साल से काम कर रहे थे तो उनके डिसअपॉइंटमेंट का लेवल देखिए आप उनकी मैं एक हरियाणा बात करूं तरफ से बाढ़ में जाए सब कुछ उनको कोई लेना देना इस बात से तो वो इतने हतोत्साहित हुए इतने परेशान हुए मुझे नहीं लगता उन्होंने कांग्रेस को वोट डाली होगी तो ये मैं कह रहा हूँ फिर वो फिर वो सारा का सारा फिर वो सारे के सारे वो सारे और दूसरा मैं जो कह रहा हूँ अब आप देखो एक एक मैं आपको सिंपल एक एग्जाम्पल दे रहा हूँ उचाणा का हल्के का जहां पे चौधरी वीरेंद्र सिंह के लड़के चुनाव लड़ रहे थे वो बत्तीस वोट से आ रहे हैं दोनों इंडिपेंडेंट जो कांग्रेस के रेबल थे बत्तीस हजार दोनों के पास वोट दोनों ही जाट है दोनों के पास वोट बत्तीस हजार है आप अंदाजा लगाओ किसी ने रहा फिर इतना मतलब सबको इतनी गलत फहमी के भाई कोई चिंता करने की जरूरत नहीं इसलिए जब तक युद्ध आप जीत ना जाओ जीता ऐसा होता है मतलब realizing we are in a on a weaker wicket we might not win but at least you make some changes and do something which helps you in like wo aapko opponent ki weakness ka fayda lena hota hai was bjp much more prepared in terms of like uh, as uh, kushal pal ji saying congress ne apna candidate selection bahut kharab kara was bjp like rss actually uh, doing a lot of work in terms of like strategizing on कैंडिडेट सिलेक्शन या कहां पे इंडिपेंडेंट लड़ाना है क्या करना है भाई इंडिपेंडेंट भी तो अपने आप कई जगह नहीं लड़ते हैं उन्हें प्रॉपअप किया जाता है ये खैर हमेशा होता है हर चुनाव में होता है तो कांग्रेस 2024 में सिर्फ इस वजह से हारी मैं ये नहीं मान सकता हूं क्योंकि ये तो नेचर ऑफ पॉलिटिक्स है नो बट आई थिंक यू वर एक शायद देयर वाज अ क्वेश्चन व्हिच यू सेड दैट 
the party system doesn't change after every election but i think you know someone from the rss a, a, a senior leader in haryana told me that this election should be look i actually this is, we kept that as a headline on one of the pieces that i wrote today that this election should be seen as the first post modi bjp victory hmm. because he was as even kushal pal ji was saying he was quite absent in the this election uh hmm. to again humne kyunki 2014 mein bhi when bjp came to haryana so much of um, the, the their victory was attributed to the modi factor to hmm. is baar to modi factor us tarah se nahi tha to kya tha is baar is baar वो कार्डर था एंड आई थिंक हमें आरएसएस और बीजेपी के कार्डर को एज डिस्टिंक्ट देखना नहीं चाहिए बिकॉज ऑन ग्राउंड दे डू वर्क वेरी सीमलेसली तो वो गेज भी करना कई बार मुश्किल हो जाता है कौन आरएसएस है कौन बीजेपी है बिकॉज दे वर्क वेरी वेरी सीमलेसली बट वॉट यू वर सींग इज एब्सोल्यूटली ट्रू बिकॉज ये और यही आई थिंक आर एस एस जैसी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन अगर आपके लिए काम कर रही हो तो ये ये ही फायदा रहता है दैट throughout the last 6 to 8 months they were providing constant feedback to the bjp about which policies are failing even if it's agni veer to aap isko tweak kariye and haryana government ne usko uske baad tweak kiya ki bola ki agni veeron ko fir hum permanent naukriyan denge so how does this kind of policy revision keep happening it, it, it keeps happening it ha- happens because of the feedback that is coming exactly. from the cadre so uh, in that sense bjp ka cadre is bar uh, rss ka bjp ka wo puri tarah se laga hua tha and i think uh, you know one thing do rahul before uh, i close i want because i was seeing there there were questions about ki exit polls itne galat kyu hue uh, i'm not getting into that at all but i think ek cheez jo hum galat karte hain uh, we mostly at least journalists i won't say that for academics but journalists jo hain wo election ke time pe hi ground pe utarte hain abhi agar hum ek sawal puchna chahiye apne aap se wo hai ki jart where does jart politics go from here in haryana yeah. because humne itne time se hum bol rahe hain ki 10 saal se bjp ka hi model hai ki dominant caste ke, ke against ab sari but what happens to the dominant caste वो अपनी पॉलिटिक्स को कैसे अडेप्ट करते हैं वो कैसे चेंज करते हैं तो अब आई थिंक टू वॉच द स्पेस ऑफ द जाट पॉलिटिक्स इन हरियाणा वुड बी वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग एंड इफ यू वॉच दैट कंसिस्टेंटली आई डोंट थिंक वील बी एज शॉक्ट इन ट्वेंटी हरियाणा में समथिंग ऑल्सो इंटरेस्टिंग है डिस्कशन नहीं हो रहा है दिस सेलेक्शन इन सम वे सिग्नल इधर द एंड or at least decline of three lal families and puddha families yes. these have been basically the dominant power forces of haryana for last so many years all the chief ministers uh, you know came from there i'm not saying end like you know in some ways they are getting restricted and no. all of them were uh, uh, sort of like uh, you know are from uh, jat community some of the things that you saw in haryana happening you know all the uh, like the issues that you are mentioning was a reaction to my mind from sociological view point Uh, of loss of power and you will see mm-hmm. much more spilling of loss of power in years to come something which i wrote in my uh, htp piece today that there is going to be a reaction of how this one quick point mm-hmm. uh, i think uh, we need to you know in this whole process i think we need to give the credit where it is due i mean we know that bjp has machinery it has resources etc but i think it's also about you know putting it into a practice Uh, mm. BJP, you have to give the credit to it, even if it is a loss battle. But they fight till the end. Yeah, yeah. that's something missing with the Congress, etc. I mean, even in Jammu, and Ma'am will tell you more. Uh, just two months back, if you travel to Jammu, etc., there was you no know, all sort of sort of you, you felt that it is a wave towards Congress. People would talk about the real issues, etc. But they absolutely they were nowhere, even mm. where they had the space. you had rahul gandhi perhaps coming one even to the extent that it went to this level that umar abdullah had to say that rahul gandhi should focus on jammu he came mm-hmm. to sopor yes he came to sopor on the same day when when umar abdullah was supposed to go there good good no absolutely so, no you are on the contrary you had home minister you had defense minister going door to door in uh-huh. the poorest areas of even of. though they were knowing that there is not much favorable it could not be a favorable you no know, movement for us i mean we may mm. have lesser seats uh, this time but they did not give up yes absolutely and something okay. that that was missing from the other side so we can have differences or other things but oh. it is it, yes. they work they work hard yeah 
Kushal Palji, you have last uh, 30 seconds to conclude uh, since... Uh, नहीं मैं ये 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 बात में ये जो अभी जो बात रही है किसानिया ने मैं ये बता रहा हूँ कि जो इन्होंने जो लास्ट तक उम्मीद रखी हालांकि इनको एक्सपेक्टेशन नहीं थी सैनी साहब ने भी खुद हेमा मालिनी को बुलाया सिमृति रानी को बुलाया और डोर टू डोर गए वो डोर टू डोर खुद भी डोर टू डोर गए ये इनकी दूसरी बात जैसे कांग्रेस का चीफ हार गया उदय बान जो हरियाणा प्रेजिडेंट है या तो फिर वहां पर गए ही नहीं है या उन्होंने बहुत लाइटली ले लिया है तो अब ये जैसे आप अभी कह रहे थे एक तो जो डोमिनेंस का इशू जो सामने ने उठाया जाट लीडरशिप के लिए क्वेश्चन मार्क है आने वाले समय के लिए दूसरी बात मुझे लगता है जो रीजनल पार्टीज हैं उनका आई डोंट थिंक कोई रिवाइवल इस तरीके से होगा जिस तरीके से पास्ट में जेजेपी का हुआ है जेजेपी की तो जमानत जब होगी सभी जगह पे एक जगह छोड़ के और आई के जो आई के जो मुखिया थे अभय चौटाला वो अपने आपको सीएम का दावेदार प्रोजेक्ट करे थे वो खुद हार गए हैं और बी का पहले जनाधार नहीं है और आम आदमी पार्टी भले दिल्ली में हो उसका भी कोई जनाधार नहीं है उनको बहुत पुअर मतलब लोकसभा में भी और अब भी बहुत ही कम वोट परसेंटेज मिला है तो मुझे लगता है आने वाले समय फाइट जो है दोनों पार्टी के बीच में रहने वाली है और लोकल रीजनल पार्टीज विल बी डिक्लाइनिंग आई थिंक इन फ्यूचर थैंक यू सो मच डॉक्टर कुशल पाल सान्या प्रोफेसर वानी एंड प्रोफेसर चौधरी थैंक यू एवरी वन हू ज्वाइन डस्ट टूडे एंड बिकेम पार्ट ऑफ दिस कॉन्वर्सेशन sorry we couldn't take each of the questions uh, uh, but you know uh, please contact uh, some of these finest mind on on uh, state of haryana and jammu and kashmir uh, and uh, reach out to them but thank you again for joining us today and as i said uh, you know i'm uh, like i'm a pollster at a heart so i'm sort of agreed with the situation in a week from now uh, we will have a serious conversation with people who look at polling data more uh, closely on what uh, went wrong uh till then have a, a good night uh, and enjoy thank you so much again mm, thank, you so much. Much thank you so much thank you bye bye